Nightingale, the popular survival game that was meant to be releasing later this year, has had a hell of a lot of attention recently through Gamescom. They've released a brand new trailer, loads of awesome new tidbits, and a brand new release date. Now, the game is releasing a lot later than planned in February of 2024, but there is a lot going on in 2023, especially towards the back end, Starfield, Call of Duty, and loads of other titles that will be coming out. So, luckily, for survival fans, that means we've got a little bit more time to prepare, and that gives the team a little bit more time to prep the game and get everything looking spick and span. Now, I have another announcement to make. For the better part of a year, I've been part of a group that have been playtesting it and giving feedback to the team over at Inflection. And a massive, massive thank you to those guys for giving me the opportunity. I really appreciate it. And today we can talk about a few of my thoughts. There's not too much I can go into greater detail with, but we can have a bit of a chat about it. Before we do that, though, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we will be covering Nightingale in full when it releases and everything up until that point. We have stepped back a little bit from wide gaming. We are now focusing quite a bit on the new channel, which is Space Cowboy. If you head over to there as well and Space Cowboy Twitter page, the links are in the description. We are giving away a Starfield Constellation Edition uh, that, that ends on Wednesday. So make sure you head over there and do the good stuff. So before I start, I do just want to say that my experience has been through playtests. So everything that I have seen is subject to change. Things may change. As the development continues on Nightingale, and with each playtest that they've been doing, it gets better and better. So, very excited for this one. It's definitely one to look out for if you are a survival fan. Now, what I can say about Nightingale, over the time that I've been playing and testing it, is the improvements that have been made have been absolutely phenomenal. Ever since the first playtest back towards the start of 2023 and end of 2022, I believe it was, Things have changed drastically, and for the better. They've been taking on a lot of feedback through playtesters, not just in the group that we're in, but overall, they've done a lot of playtests where they've been inviting different amounts of people through each one, and I think the most recent one had a, a few thousand. So they've taken all of this feedback, and they are making the game better with each playtest that they do which is always a good sign, especially if a development team are listening to the community and understanding what they want from the game. Now, I can't go into great specifics, but what I can tell you is the game looks beautiful, it runs great, and it is loads of fun. If you are a hardcore survival player, this game will be right up your street. And the reason that I say a hardcore survival player is because a lot of the building aspects, a lot of the crafting aspects could sometimes take a little bit of time, especially towards the start of the game when you're learning and, and getting used to everything. It can take a while to craft, especially some of those more complex structures that you see in some trailers, um, but the building and the crafting overall is very fun for that type of player. If you are one of those hardcore players that like to buy the survival games to build, if you like games like Grounded with the building and the crafting in that, um, you'll enjoy it. Games like Ark, Conan, Survival, Conan Exiles, whatever it's called, one of those. Um, games similar to that, you will really enjoy it. Now, when it comes to enemies, the terrain, everything about it just makes you feel things, which is nice. That's It's not just there and is, oh, that's cool, let's carry on. No, a lot of the things make you stop and have a little bit of a look around and engage with what's going on around you and the terrain that you're in, which is always great for a survival game because it just extends that life cycle of the game. You're not just going in, going, right, I want to build that, bang, let's get the materials, bang, let's do it. No, you'll go, oh, I want to build that, but that's quite cool as well, so let's go and have a look at that. There is so much to do and so much to take in. The game does have a relatively slow burn. It does take a while to get in. You've got to get through quite a lot of tutorial because it is very in-depth in and very detailed. But I think having that level of detail is going to be what makes it stand out from some of the other survival games that we've seen recently. There have been quite a few that have just released and you've gone and built your things and then you're a little bit bored after that. Whereas Nightingale is going to have a very nice story to it. There's going to be a lot of elements to that story as you play as well. Similar to some other survival games where you can find notes around that will lead you into different story elements and let you learn a little bit about the lore of the game and the characters that you'll be coming across. Now, I play mainly solo, 
and I really enjoy the solo aspect. It is a little bit slower. If you do want to learn a little bit more about the multiplayer aspect, I recommend checking out JPG's video on it. I'll link that in the description down below as well, because he has played a lot of multiplayer with it, and uh, he's enjoying that side of it. Whereas I like to sit down and go at my own pace and not have to worry too much about other players. I'm very much a solo player when it comes to pretty much all games. And a good thing about this is, although it does have that multiplayer aspect, I didn't feel like I was being slowed down because I was playing solo. I didn't feel like I was being punished for it, which is a good thing. And I enjoy games that do that and give you that option to play both sides if that is what you choose to do. So the building and crafting is something that they've showcased a lot of, especially when it comes to realm cards. But what they don't show too much of is the beautiful detail in your crafting and the benches. You need a hell of a lot. When my first time playing, I, I built a small little hut and, and put a lot of benches in it. And before I knew it, I was being overrun by my benches because you need to be able to craft a lot of things in the game. And being able to craft a lot of things in the game means you're going to need a lot of crafting benches, cooking benches, loads of different bits and pops, um, which is something that is great, but at the same time can be a little bit tedious. But I like the amount of detail that has gone into each one of these items. They all look so unique and serve a brilliant purpose. And for the so hardcore survival and crafters out there, you are going to absolutely love this game. You will be spending hours upon hours upon hours fine-tuning your base, your crafting areas, and making everything your own. Which is something that every survival game should have for the longevity of it. Building your own base and, and making it exactly how you want it is a game of in itself, which is always great. And Nightingale gives you the tools and the opportunity to be able to build exactly what you want. Now, when it comes to combat and weapons, when it comes to the crafting of weapons, you can craft a nice bunch. But towards the start of the game, same with most survival games, you are going to be using those primitive tools and weapons. And they work really well, especially towards those early enemies. The ones that you've become across a lot of are the bound minions. And they can be quite threatening, especially if there's a group of them. When you're one-on-one -on -one with them, they're not too much of a problem. But it feels good. Combat feels nice, it feels smooth. And when it comes to the realm cards, which we will talk about a little bit more in a moment, if you are mixing them up and using some of those those more um, beasty ones, should we say, and you end up going to a realm that is a little bit above your, your pay grade, you will find out about it. Don't get me wrong, the combat is not, especially if you're against your enemy level, um, it's not too difficult. It's fun. But if you end up stumbling into something that has a hell of a lot higher level than you, you are going to get your ass handed to you. It is not easy, and I like that. And then, of course, we have the realm cards, which is definitely something that makes this game stand out above other survival games. The realm cards are fun. They can be a little bit difficult. It did take me a while to get used to them, um, but that was in earlier playtests. In the newer playtests, it looks absolutely amazing. They perform really, really well. And with the absolutely insane amount of these cards that you can have, you can go to pretty much any realm you want with any conditions that you want them to be at. And that has been a big focus of all their marketing material, is those realm cards, you make whatever realm you want and you go there. You can live there if you want, you can move everything over there, you can build your own community there. Or you can just go somewhere that is full of beastie enemies to get resources and have loads of fun chopping shit up. The realm cards make this game and just add to the hours upon hours that you'll be able to put into it. And it definitely makes it stand out from the crowd. Now I can't really say much more than that, uh, other than obviously that that is my almost all of my experience. There's a lot more that we can't really go into detail with. But the play tests are brilliant. It is making this game so much better. The way that they've done this is awesome. And the community are going to absolutely love it. Nightingale has built up a very, very nice, dedicated fan base already, and hopefully that continues. Hopefully we'll see a decent chunk of their more, more of their TikToks, more of their YouTube shorts, 
all of the stuff that they've been posting. There's loads of cool stuff there. If you do want to check out their channels, the links are all in the description down below, as well as mine. And also, remember, I'm giving away a Starfield Constellation Edition, so if you do want a chance of winning that, head over to the link in the description. And also, check out JPG, and a massive thank you to Inflection, Scarves, and all the team over there for giving us the chance to help create something that is absolutely awesome. Massive thank you to everybody that's watched. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I've been wired. You've been awesome. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.